You then have the washing machine problem. You see, if you want to write a program that runs on any machine, you can't. Because each processor has a different set of machine code. So whether you're compiling or interpreting, it won't work. It took a temporarily out of work programmer called James Gosling to come up with the solution. And it was clever. And it really was going to change things. Let me explain. James Gosling, a PhD computing buff, was working for some microsystems and had just finished a major project. What would normally happen in the world of programming is that if there was no work for you to do, you'd be asked to inquire somewhere else. But such was James Gosling's reputation that Sun Microsystems said, we'll keep you on for six months until the next big project. Uh, just do something. James Gosling wasn't the sort to sit around. He had a little think about what would be a good idea. The main problem was that different types of machines ran on different processors, and so you couldn't take code from one machine to another and have it work. So instead what he decided to do was to create something called intermediate code, which I'll go into in a minute. Well, that was a really good idea, and he created a programming language that would do what he wanted it to do. He looked outside his window, and there was an oak tree. So he called his programming language Oak. Well, they had a little think about what they could use Oak for, and they decided that there was this coming thing called the Internet. You may have heard of it. And this would be an ideal language, because you don't know what sort of processor somebody who looks at a web page is going to have. But Oak wasn't a very user-friendly name. So they did what all good computing people do. They decided to go and have a coffee and have a little think about what they could call this new language. And they tossed around loads of ideas for a while until one of the people sitting in the meeting said, Ah, what I really need is another Java. And that was the name that stuck. James Gosling's idea was to create an intermediate program. What the language would do was turn it into a pretend machine code. All machine codes work in the same way. All processors do the same thing. It's just sand. So what he did was he created his own pretend machine code. It was now in a low-level language. Then all he had to do was to write a little program that translated from the pretend machine code into the real machine code. So this pretend machine code was called intermediate code. Now that program is very small and is easy to write for each processor. It's just saying, take this one and turn it into that one. There's no thinking for it to do really, just a selection process. So that's what happened. He created this runtime program. And you probably have a Java runtime program on your computer system. This was a wonderful way of doing things, because now you could write a program once, create its intermediate code, and ship that intermediate code off to anybody. And it would run on their machine, as long as they had their Java runtime. And that was easy to find. And that meant that you could run programs across the Internet. Because the Internet doesn't know what the type of machine you're running. So you just download the intermediate code. And that's what's run on your web browser, that intermediate code.